and uh, what I will say maybe something uh, different in general. And when we look at uh, here, and it is said, furthermore, the expression in Pakistan is talked about Jan and Kashmir. When we talk about uh, Jan and Kashmir, let's go in 1945 during the uh, second third part. The territory is a princely state under the colonial uh, empire that is the United Kingdom. And when the United uh, Nations was established, the territory is defined under uh, chapter 11, non-self-governing territory, and it was a code. And what is today the territory? Because if he defined the territory of Kashmir, Prince the state of Kashmir, we will understand in real politics what we can do here. I mean, when we say real politics, uh, real politics doesn't mean that what is as of today, but what we have the capacity. I mean, when we say the capacity in international relations, there is a magical point. That is, how the international treaties are the, uh, uh, signa, signed and ratified. When we say that, uh, that is, uh, for the fifth session of the Human Rights Council, it means the consent of the states that are uh, bound by the Human Rights Treaties of the United Nations. But if we define the territory of Jammu and Kashmir, but the consent of the state that is here, Pakistan, is not important. Because if we well define the territory of Kashmir, then Article uh, 103 of the United Nations Charter is valid. It means that we give obligations for a state that is Pakistan without its consent. Now, the problem of the uh, non-defining the territory of uh, Jammu and Kashmir till this time is the real mistake of all of us till this time. If Jammu and Kashmir was a colony at the time of uh, decolonization, and today, when you say that it's under the uh, occupation of Pakistan, then who owns the land of Kashmir in the United Nations legal system? I mean, I would like to say something. Decolonization has many uh, problems, and when we look at the decolonization in uh, the world as a well, whole, uh, there is no justice. But we don't have any other thing. And when we create the obligation by the right definition of the territory of Jammu and Kashmir, that it is really one changing world can change everything for the real politics. This is not my choice. This is what in real politics someone can make. And it is that uh, instead of using occupied, because the uh, United Nations Security Council defined the Kashmir issue uh, in a different manner of the United Nations at that time when the colonization is not accepted as a uh, I would like to make a difference between the uh, so much using uh, the wording of the self-determination in the sense of uh, Kashmir because in the world some remedial uh, suggestions movements uh, using the word of self-determination and there is a misunderstanding of the uh, self-determination uh, in the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights. What we say in decolonization is subject to Article 73 of the UN Charter, and there is not the wording of the self-determination in that sense. And uh, it is defined uh, during the UN Security Council resolutions in the process rules. When you read it, it's the verdict of the people, and at that time it's not used as uh, self-determination. But as of today, the self-determination or the verdict of the people on decolonization, not for the minority rights, as accepted a preemptory norm, a due cogens norm, when it is accepted a due cogens norm, then the verdict of the people on the decolonization is a binding. When we say it is binding, then we return back to the uh, resolutions of the United Nations Security Council. It was accepted at uh, that time, Article uh, Chapter 6 of the UN Charter, it was not binding. But as of today, Chapter 7 of the UN Charter is uh, accepted if you go to the, uh, or anybody goes to the International Court of Justice for this decision. And when it is binding, then we have got the self-determination referendum. But when it is self-determination referendum, there is a definition of the territory. 
The definition of the territory, by not defining uh, with another word, makes Pakistan as an administrative state. When Pakistan becomes an administrative state, it means that the territory does not uh, decolonize yet. And when it is not decolonized yet, we have got a choice of asking for everybody here to put Kashmir in the decolonization list. It can go for a different position. So and would you conclude? Because we yes. are supposed to conclude it yes. in so, okay. so We are running out of the time. If we define uh, Jammu and Kashmir sub uh, territory as a non uh, decolonized place, under the principles of uh, leaving no one behind, Pakistan government, also Indian government, needs to give every year a special report to the Secretary General on two the aspects and the rights of the people, and uh, which means that the Pakistan government, also Indian government, has a responsibility to the United Nations Decolonization Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.